is Tupac. You know, I never went to try to match another other artist, and that was something he wanted. And that was something I was proud to do, you know, because it wasn't for the money, it wasn't for trying to be famous, it was for me letting him know, I love what you're doing, I'm gonna give you my all to make sure you can continue to do what you're doing. So many people want to blame this on this East Coast, West Coast rivalry. What do you say about that? You can't say it's an East Coast, West Coast rivalry, number one. People were starting to say it's an East Coast, West Coast rivalry because it was people that's trying to make money. It was true people trying to make careers. It was people trying to get famous. It was people hustling other people out of money mm -hmm. on the East Coast. You don't have no team. You need us. We from the East Coast. Pay us X amount of dollars for protection. And some of these idiots was doing it. For us, how we looked at it is, we looked at it as we representing the West Coast, but we representing the ghetto, because that's where we're from. And we got a death row east in New York. Mm -hmm. We have um, Craig Mack is down with us. Run DMC is down with us. The night of the club, Craig Mack performed, Run DMC performed. Not one West Coast rapper performed. So if it was so much of an East Coast, West Coast thing, they wouldn't be performing there. How do you <clears> think, <throat> how do you want Tupac to be memorialized? How do you want him to be remembered? Tupac is a man, he's not a weak person. So he don't want to be, people to show him his love by tears and passing out. He want people to be strong and stand up for him. And Tupac's a legend. Like I said, Tupac wasn't born, he was sent to us. I mean, he got the greatest mother in the world, but he was actually sent to her, and she was good enough to let him come to us. And he gave himself to the world. And Tupac will live forever. It's not a day to go by that in music, when music come on, the people won't think of Tupac. It's not movies or nothing. I like to see, and we'll see Tupac be the legend that he is. Um, we all learn from this. I, mean, I often say that we learn to um, how strong black women is. I mean, that's been in my head lately a lot. Why do you say that? Because um, the mothers of death row were stronger than all of us. When this happened, the mothers was calling Tupac's mother, praying with her, coming to see her, talk to her. I'm talking about all the mothers on death row with their with their sons or daughters on the label, mm -hmm. and they showed more heart than any of us. You know, they was like standing up. We're gonna pray. He's gonna be okay. And when he wasn't okay, you know, Tupac mother was the first one to say, "When you have a more, I don't want nobody to wear black." I'm wearing white. Tupac has gone to a better place. He's free now. There's nothing nobody can do nothing to him. And I sat back and I thought, I was like, yeah. Can't nobody arrest him. Can't nobody try to put him down. Can't nobody fire shots at him. Can't nobody hurt him no more. He's, he's in heaven in a better place. I know he's getting ready for me because I'm coming, you know, because we're all going to die. Nobody gonna leave here alive, and <clears throat> people die all the time. But it takes a real special person to die and always be remembered. Tupac is on the level of Malcolm X or Martin Luther King. I mean, you see, they live forever. They got holidays. I mean, if we can't get a holiday around the world, at least we can get one in my neighborhood for Tupac. I mean, we just, you know, we'll celebrate, you know, his birthday every year with a block party. We'll block off the whole street. We'll party and we'll, we'll celebrate Tupac because that's a, that's a place in our heart that can't be replaced. And one of the things that's really important that people want to question 
his credibility as an artist. Won't no artist, no rapper, period, ever sell the type of records Tupac sold and will sell. And the ones who feel or felt that they was more talented than Tupac or better than Tupac, pull out a double CD. They won't do it. The record company probably won't allow them to. Uh, the artists probably don't have the heart to. Because when I went to Tupac and said, we got all these songs, let's do a double CD. Tupac like, if you with it, I'm with it, let's do it. So, couldn't no other artists do that. They couldn't pull it off, no matter who, what other rapper out there. If they put out a double CD, their shit would flop. Tupac put out a double CD and sold six million records and continued to sell. And he was the most hardest worker and the best worker I ever seen in, my, in the studio in my whole entire life. He go in and do one takes. He don't have to punch in. He don't have to write his rap over it. He just make it happen. He just do what he do, and he he does he did it, and it, it proves that he does it better than anybody. George, please allow me two more. Okay. Future of Death Row and the, the new the new album. Yes, mm -hmm. right. We want to talk about all our new. We have mm -hmm. six. Yeah. Now. Um. Tell me about. I understand Tupac has a, a new album coming out. Mm -hmm. Tell me about that one. It's called Machiavelli. And when um, Tupac done the album, he called me and said, look, come to my house right now. It's about 3 in the morning. <clears throat> I go over his house. I smoke my cigar. He's smoking his cigarettes. He said, look, I want the album cover to be me on a cross. Because I feel I've been cr being crucified. I'm here to be crucified like Jesus. He said, I'm not clowning the religion or nothing, but that's what I feel. Mm. And I told him, you know, as usual, i handle it for you. So I called Whiskey and he and our art department, and they done it. And Machiavelli is like, he feel better about that album than he do All Eyes On Me. Wow. He said, because you know, I'm speaking so real. I'm telling, I'm coming all the way from my gut to my heart, out through my mouth, telling the people how I feel. And he, he did just that. Why Machiavelli? Machiavelli? Machiavelli, why Machiavelli? Um, we have nicknames. It's, and uh, Tupac called herself and we called Tupac Machiavelli. Tupac and my people called me Simon. And that's, that was our, that was our thing, you know. He, Tupac never was like, he would never call me and, and be like, Shug, what you doing? He'd be like, Simon, what's up? Let's do it. And I'd be like, Machiavelli, what's up? And Machiavelli was um, one of the greatest generals or war guys around. If you know the history of it, if you pick up the book, Tupac was very, very militant. Talk to me a little bit about what's the future of Death Row now in light of Dre's departure and now Tupac's untimely death? I'm not saying anything, you know, for us trying to put Dre down as a person. Mm -hmm. uh, Dre's departure wasn't a loss. Two reasons. I mean, one of the reasons it was the greatest thing in the world for me. I mean, if you have a multi-million dollar company, maybe worth a billion dollars or so, and you own it 100% and don't have a partner, and you didn't have to give him nothing but his walking papers, that's great. Wow. So that was a negative. And Das and all the other little producers and the sass and all the ones we have, and they did the tracks. Dre wasn't doing the tracks, and Dre didn't write the lyrics, so that wasn't a that wasn't a loss. I mean, Dre didn't do California Love, basically, so that wasn't a loss at all. Tupac is a loss, not for saying death row success, for as our heart, you know, but Tupac taught 
every artist something before he left. Mm -hmm. So Death Row is gonna be even more successful. We're gonna sell more records this year than people can never dream of. And what Tupac gift was to artists on Death Row, work happens. He would go in and make songs like this. You have people around the studio saying, man, we gotta get like Pac, Pac just go in there, kick him in, kick him out, kick him in, kick him out. And that's all they talk about. And exactly what they're doing. And, and the people is working so great. I mean, you got Daddy Boy, who's an R&B guy, who... Oh, he's great. Probably the greatest R&B guy in the world. He really looked up to Tupac. Mm -hmm. You got Michelle A, whose album done, who is great. You got Rage. You got The Dog Father, which is Snoop's album. The Dog Pound got a new album now. You got Off TB on Ghetto Records and Death Row. Six Feet Deep, which is R&B. Um, I'm going to say it, but I don't like saying it because a lot of people get on this bandwagon about how they're going to do rock and jazz and R&B. And I always like to show people what we're going to do because I always feel demonstration is better than conversation. But all the stuff that people are talking about, Mm -hmm. We got done, we'll be re released. And Death Row will definitely sell more records. We probably sell anywhere from 20 to 40, 50 million records this year. And that's saying a lot. So, so Death Row's going to survive? Oh, Death Row is. See, the, it's two things you got to understand. A lot of people care about the Hollywood and stuff, a lot of people care about the fame. Death Row has the people. Without the people, you're nothing. It's people all over the world, and I got a lot of love for anybody who's listening, to call in and concern for Tupac, for myself, for Death Row. And they was like, what could we do? We're on our way. We're there. We're dry. We're fly. We're there. You know? Mm -hmm. So we got the support of the people. The people is more powerful than anything. Even if it's the president, you gotta, uh, the people gotta vote. Mm -hmm. So if you have all the people, naturally you're gonna be the person in charge. I mean, God won't let death row fail. The people won't let death row fail. So death row and, and much as death row meant to Tupac, I wouldn't even let it fail. Also, Tupac had a conversation with me and he said, how do you feel I should be in the future? what you like to see from me. And if anything I told him, he would have followed it. Chain of command, mm -hmm. that's how we was. I said, I want to see you have a record label. I just distributed for you. You can have your own label, because I don't want you to be 35 years old, pock rapping. He said, well, cool. So he got a label, which is the Outlaws, one of his artists is the Outlaws, which they great. I mean, the young guys, the little homies, I love them like I love Pac. They, they're part of Pac, because Pac really spent a lot of time with them and groomed them. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we got Storm. We got a lot of artists on this label that I got to make sure his label survive. Um, one of the last things Pac gave me <clears throat> was his medallion, who's an Am Lambs, and they was cutting his shirt off to work on him. And Pac said, hold up, wait, wait. Simon, keep my chain for me. He was like, I got too many diamonds. You know how Pac is. I got too many diamonds on his chain for letting one of these ambulances, one of these doctor people steal my chain. Keep it for me. And he said that. And I was on one bed. He was on the other. And we was going this way. And I was like, you all right, homie? He was like, all right, homie. I love you. I was like, shit, love you too, fool. You better up and get better, you know. That's that's the relationship we had. And for is any negative people out there, to be negative towards Tupac is you call yourself just shitting on the whole black race. Because he stood up for the blackness. He stood up for the, you know, power. Not only did he stand up for um, the blackness, separate Tupac from a lot of black movement people. Mm -hmm. he, was, he wasn't racist. You know, he wasn't the type to say, you know, it's all about black, forget the whites. He, he wasn't that type. He respected white people and he loved white people. But 
he knew that we struggle so long as blacks mm -hmm. that we have to keep on and work harder. You know, for us, the blacks, we needed more help. Mm -hmm. And that's what he gave, and he would give his life for that. He gave his life for that. That makes him a legend. That makes him real, real deep. I know that people speak on talent. People speak on death row. And Pac took death row so serious. He came to me and said, did you see Dr. Dre? That's not smart. He said, Dre put out a record. East Coast Killer, West Coast Killer. Which the record been out about two months now. It's not on the charts. You don't hear it on the radio station. The video is definitely not number one on BET. And he says, that's, that's a, you know, it's been like, okay, you make good songs, it's cool. Mm -hmm. But Pac was the type that three in the morning, four in the morning, if we ain't together, he finna get a hold of me, or vice versa. What you doing? I know you ain't sleep. Let's get up right now, let's go in. But what was I'll it about him? my house. Let's go to my, huh? What was it about him? It's really hard to describe, you know. It was, it was joy, you know. You can have a, everybody go through it. You can have a long day at the office, a long day at the studio, whatever the case may be, mm -hmm. and you like drain, might be pissed off. He finna hit you, call you on your phone, and make you laugh. You know what I'm saying? Be like, let's go do this. Come on. You might tell him, well, I'm going home. He'd be like, well, I'm on my way. What's house you going to? Because he knew the houses, and I never thought about this to you. That's actually that question. I, like, he had access to my houses, and I had access to his. I mean, he had keys to my house. Mm -hmm. You might go there one day and open the door. He already did parlay, and you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so it was, you know, it was just, it was like that. Shuggy must have a heavy heart. I mean, uh, to have a dream taken away is a real disappointment to any person. You know, that's, that's the most important thing to me. It's like, you know, you go through life and you got a lot of money, you got the material things, you know, you got your family, you got your business, and you know, you love the people that work for you. You love your artists. And you know, you feel it's complete, but there's just something you're missing. You know, some people say, okay, I made it. I made money now. I'm, I'm considered rich now. I'm successful now. But there's just something missing. And all of a sudden, a person like Tupac walks in your life, and you're like, well, hey, that's what I was missing. You know, so it was, it's real personal. It's real important. It's real important. What's the last um, 10 days been like for you? I don't even know it's been 10 days. Uh, the last 10 days have been real spiritual for me. You know, because you, you go to the point where you want to be with the people you love, but you want to spend some time by yourself. Me, Cigar, and Pac, you know, and you often have a, have a, go into a thought of, you know, of talking to God. <clears throat> and, you know, when I call myself speaking to God or, or asking questions, saying, well, why he's gone, you gotta also thank him at the same time. I mean, it could have been a part of my life that I never, ever got to experience. It could have been, he could have never gotten to my life. I mean, when he called me and I went to go visit him in, in jail, he could have passed in jail before we had the opportunity to do all the stuff we did. To me, if it was 11 months, it seemed like 50 years. Because, I mean, it's like it was nonstop. It was um, the greatest joy to me that Pac would tell you. He wouldn't sugarcoat it. He would tell you the truth. Like the first time, which it was things I didn't even know. First time ever, first time he ever been to a basketball game in his whole entire life, I took him. And it was the Lakers playing the Bulls, 
And you know, we had our floor seats around the floor, you know, with the food and cracking jokes, talking about the players, robbing around the head, talking about this person, and we would make a big, big thing about it. So after the game, he'd grab me and be hugging me. He said, man, I had so much fun. He said, don't you know, this is the first time I ever been to a basketball game. <clears throat> so you look back and go, man, you act, that's like you actually done something good. Then first time I ever been to a hockey game, I took it, which we was running out of ice. The first time Pac ever went to a fight in his whole entire life, the first fight we went to was the Hall of Field and the Riddick, and the Riddick Bowl. And I think we had more fun hitting each other, shaking each other, uh, laughing, and people probably had more fun watching us than they than the fight. So it was, it was an honor to me to be able to have a little brother like that to show him stuff that people I didn't have nobody to show me. You know, I, he was more than an artist. Definitely more than an artist. I mean, you know, if you lose an artist, you're like, okay, you feel it. And you say, well, I, you know, the artist is no longer here. I lost the artist. And you think about business. When you lose a best friend or a little brother, that's something you can't replace. Can't nobody walk up to me and say, you know what? I'm going to take Tupac's place. I tell them they out there, out their mind, you know, you can't take Tupac's place, you know. Pac is Pac. Force that space in my, in my, in my heart that I have for Pac can't be replaced. I don't think people knew that. What I liked about him is that our relationship, we didn't do, we didn't do our relationship for the people. We didn't go and say, look, we had to fight. Uh, look, with this club, are we doing this? Mm -hmm. We did it for me and him. We would go in there and have fun, and, and uh, we was real deep on a lot of stuff. I mean, real deep. We was at the point where we used to have conversations. And I'd say, you know what? I work hard at what I do. You work hard at what you do. We're a perfect team. And if something happened to go wrong and I'm not there, you know, you got to pick up the pace and make it happen. Tupac to me was uh, uh, insurance for me. What I mean by that, because the people at Death Row, the community, and fans depend on me to make sure records good or toys be given away on Christmas and turkeys on Thanksgiving and open the door for other entrepreneurs, especially black. One thing you got to realize is we're black men. So our, our job is try to open doors for other black people. And I felt that, well, you know, something can happen to me. Anything. You, know, you never know. And I used to tell him, I felt good about it. I said, look, if something go wrong, you got to step up the bat. You got to run this company. You got to do this. You got to be there. And he used to be like, well, you been doing a great job, and that's how he is. He was like, this type of like, I do it. I won't let you down. You know, he was, I don't know if I'm doing it, but I'll make it happen. And he was, I said, he was my spokesperson. But did you ever think it would happen the other way around? No, you know, never thought that. You say you've been very spiritual the last 10 days. Mm -hmm. Can you share some of your thoughts? Uh, there's no negative thoughts. It's just thoughts that you thank God for that person in your life. You wonder why that person, you know, is out your life. And, you know, when a person hurt, you say stuff like, God, if he'll be all right, you can have the money, you can have the cars, you can have 
whatever, the material things you can have in my business. You know, I'm willing to start all over and be homeless for him to be okay. I would, you don't give up anything. It got so deep to a point where you would give your life. And I would have gave my life. I mean, if if I, if I could have walked in and somebody said, you know what? You got one choice. You switch places. I would have did it. You would have taken those bullets? Yeah, of course I would have taken the bullets. Um, when, I, when I heard the shots being fired, Pac stood up to try to, to, try to get in the back seat to get out to where the shots. <clears throat> That's how he got shot in his hip, which hit one of the bones, the doctor said, and traveled to hit his lung. When he stood up, I grabbed him and said, get down, and covered him. When I pulled him down, that's when I got shot in my head. And there's not one thought that, you know, would say, well, maybe I shouldn't have tried to do that or, or anything like that. I would have took every last one of them. And if I would have gave my life for him, I would have questioned And I know he would have appreciated and he would represent me and he represented Death Row. Because one thing about Pac, he loved Death Row more. And he probably loved Death Row more than me. And that's said a lot. <clears throat> On every interview, he talked about Death Row. Of any, he took this chain right here. He probably made this the most popular item in the world. I mean, he took it and he flashed it on all eyes on me. He flashed it all the time. It was the, it was the proudest thing he could be involved in. He was, uh, Pac was, Pac come from a real deep background for us, the Panther Party. Mm -hmm. And Pac used to say, me and you and Death Row, we like the Panthers Party, but we're not going around there saying black power, this black power, that. We actually doing stuff. You know, we feeding people, we, we giving jobs, we giving, we giving hope. You know, that's why I don't understand a person a black person. I can't see how a black person have a negative towards Tupac or a negative towards Death Row because if Pac didn't make it for us being successful, that closed a lot of doors in other black artists' face. Right. If Death Row doesn't survive, that closed the doors in a lot of other black companies who try to make it. I'm talking about the real black companies that own their own, not the ones who it's a Trojan horse where <clears throat> they don't make the decisions, they don't call the shots, and they don't write the checks. That's, that's different. Let me ask you something. You were hit as well in that car. Mm -hmm. Are you doing okay today? I can see your injury. I got a bullet still in my head. The bullet's still in your head? Yes. The doctor told me that um, they did brain scans, all kind of stuff, and it went in and cracked my cranium, and it stayed there. They said there'd be more chances for damage to try to take it out to sew it up. I was, I was hit there. I was grazed <clears throat> some other places. I got a deep slash of a bullet grazed the back of my neck, which if if it went another inch, it hit my spine and paralyzed me all the way down. But um, before it was an incident, Pac saved my life also. The reason why I say he saved my life is because the average person gets shot in the head, the first thing you think is, damn, I'm about to die. You know, a head shot is different. And it was, there was blood coming everywhere. <clears throat> and my concern was him. I said, you hit? He said, I'm hit. So I said, I'm going to get you to a hospital right now. So I'm driving like a madman, get, trying to you know, get help to get help him. And the first thing he said, laughingly, jokingly, loudly, is, I need a hospital? You the one shot in the head. Don't you think you need a hospital? You mean you guys were laughing? We had conversations and jokes when all, after all this took place. And I think that, that kept him there, and it definitely kept me there because when you when you got two people as tight as we are, and 
it's concerned. See, my thoughts wasn't, is Suge okay? My thoughts was, is Pac okay? Mm -hmm. And for the conversation he told me, is his thoughts when it was Pac okay, is was I, I okay? Because he keep telling me, I don't want to need to get to the doctor. So that's real, real deep that I don't think it's probably too many people around will do that type of stuff. Shug, do you wonder how you were able to survive and why you survived? It's like you said, most people get hit in the head. I think um, God was ready for me to stay here. It wasn't my time to leave. Um, I guess there's a whole bunch of good I have to do before it's time for me to go. Maybe, um, maybe Pac did more good to me. Maybe Pac's job was done. Maybe um, I felt Pac was sent to us. He wasn't like brought to us. I felt that God sent Pac to the earth to do certain things, and he done them. And he represented us, not only me, I mean, people in general. And he probably did so much good and made so many things happen that it was time for him to make better things happen in heaven. And for us, me, maybe I got a lot of more stuff to do. I mean, I don't know. I'm, I'm not God. I'm not trying to be God. Um, in a way, you know, when you have pain in your heart, you feel like, shit, let me go with my, with my homie. And then we lose. But by me still being here, Pac's going to live forever. Because I'm going to see to that. I'm going to fulfill every wish, every dream that he wanted to happen, that he wanted to see happen before he left here. And I know Pac's mother is the greatest woman in the world, which I call her my mother, and he called my mama his mother. And we, we do often, you know, brotherly things and see who going to do something for them better than another. We compete like that. Mm -hmm. So um, it's going to be a, it's going to be a long life ahead of me, a long road, because it's not going to be a day that I don't think about him. It's not going to be a day I don't miss him. Mm -hmm. So uh, I put his name on my body, on my arm which is, you know, say Tupac. Which one? Uh, the left one. The left one. Show it to us later? Yeah. All right. What, um, how do you think, let me change gears here. I know I can't ask you much about what happened. Mm-hmm. Let me see if I can ask you this. Why do you think whoever it was, unloaded on you guys like that? Why would somebody just haul off an ambush? You gotta realize something. You got two powerful, positive black men. And anytime you're doing a lot of good, people wanna bring the good down always. Always. And you never know. You never know what a, what the person's motive was. You never uh, I know whoever it is, they're regretting it. Why do you say that? The conscious, the unknown. I think it was. It was just confusing for the world to see Pac go that way. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of people try to, uh, I don't know Vanessa Williams, but um, I heard they interviewed her. I don't know if it was you, the news, and she stated that, uh, they asked her how did she feel about Tupac, the incident. Mm -hmm. And she said, you weep what you sow, and to me, for a woman to say something like that, a black woman, mm -hmm. who the black community still by her. When she was Miss America and she was known as a hoe and had new pictures everywhere, mm -hmm. we didn't turn our back on her. Right. We still bought our records. 
We brought her records that made her get back in the game and allowed her to get back into being an actress. And that's real negative. Even though if it might be facts, we don't go and say nothing negative about her and say, okay, bam. She having sex with Arnold Schwarzenegger, which the world knows, you know what I'm saying? There's, there's no puzzle. And <laughs> we, we don't say nothing like that because we always be so positive. Mm -hmm. And people felt that Tupac or myself attacked people. Pac only attacked the people who wasn't right with the community. That's how he really felt. If it was a rapper who was fake and they were only doing it for the money, Pac attacked him. If it was a rapper that messed with guys and go both ways, Pac didn't feel that was good. He was, because Pac felt he was real serious about the music. Mm -hmm. So if you're a producer or you rap, and regardless if you're married or not, and you, and you got a boyfriend that works for you, a real boyfriend who used to be a dancer, Pac would have studied all the facts. Pac was real smart. So before he say something, he'd go and do his homework. Mm -hmm. He'd say, okay, this guy right here, they say he gay, he go both ways. I'm not going to put it out there on him yet. But I'm going to do my research, and if it's true, the world should know. Because this guy might be around one of, one of those little kids one day and mess around with him. And, you know, so I'm going to do it to actually save him from molesting a little child. That's why Pac attacked certain rappers and said they gay. Because mm -hmm. he did his facts and found out it was true. I imagine you'd have to say that to put it in some music, too. Huh? I, I imagine you'd have to know to put it in some music. You have to know. I mean, yeah. Pac, wouldn't, Pac wouldn't attack anybody who was real. Like I said, um, Pac was a man with a lot of respect. He had did a Machiavelli album. He talks about Nas. Sort of bad. So at the MTV Awards, he met Nas. And he went to him. So you got a problem with me? You doing, you know, I was, I was Pac. My said, whoa, I don't want no problem. We can be cool. They had a conversation. I went over there. You know, they shook, they hugged. They said, we can do things in the future together. We can make a difference. Mm -hmm. So on the way back home, Pac said, when we get to the studio, all the negative stuff I said about Nas, I'm going to take him out and put somebody else in who deserved that. But I'm not going to say that I'm negative about Niles because I broke bread with him. Mm -hmm. And I gave him my word that we was friends. Mm -hmm. I mean, so we can't change the stuff now because Pac's not here to do it. So it got to be left in there. So Niles need to know that Pac was definitely going to change for him. So he could take it one way or the other, you know. Mm -hmm. But, you know, at least the guy was a man enough to was going to do it. Take change, please. All right.